everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the glands and cells of the endocrine system that release specific hormones that play a specific role in the body. Now, we can't go through all of them, but I'm gonna go through as many as I possibly can in the next five minutes. So, remember, the endocrine system is a collection of glands or cells that release chemicals that we term hormones into the bloodstream that can then be delivered to distal portions of the body, quite distant, widespread. All right, so let's have a look. If we do a top to toe look of some of the glands and cells, Firstly, in the brain, we've got the hypothalamus. Now, the hypothalamus sits in a deep part of the brain, and the hypothalamus is recognized as the control center for the endocrine system. Now, what it does is it can control the release of certain hormones from a gland that projects out and away from the hypothalamus called the pituitary gland. Now, there's an anterior and a posterior aspect of the pituitary gland. Let's first look at the posterior part. The hypothalamus can have a conversation with the posterior pituitary gland through nerves. There's actually some neurons that project from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary, and that means the hypothalamus will make two very important hormones, transport it down these neurons from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary, and tell them to store it until it stimulates them to release it. These two hormones are antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone stops us from peeing, so it allows for us to hold on to water in times of dehydration, and oxytocin. Oxytocin we know as the molecule that we use to make connections with other people, but it's a very important molecule for uterine contractions during labor and also ejection of milk. So hypothalamus produces them, transports them down a nerve to the posterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus through a blood supply, which means the hypothalamus must release its own hormones through this blood supply to tell the pituitary gland to release its hormones. Now the types of hormones that the anterior pituitary gland have include luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. These two hormones play an important role in the male and female reproductive system, helps produce testosterone in males, helps produce estrogen and progesterone in females. It also, the anterior pituitary gland, produces adrenal corticotropic hormone. This is a hormone that travels to the adrenal gland, specifically the adrenal cortex, to release a number of adrenal hormones. There's also growth hormone. Growth hormone plays an important role in metabolism, growth and development. Uh, and the anterior pituitary gland also releases thyroid stimulating hormone, which means it travels to the thyroid gland and tells it to release hormones. So what does the thyroid gland do? It releases two important hormones called T3 and T4. T3 is the most active form of thyroid, and I've done a video on thyroid, and it plays a very important role in metabolism. If you have an overactive thyroid, you have this overactive metabolism, you lose weight, you tend to sweat more, and with an underactive thyroid, it seems to be the opposite. You seem to gain weight, and you seem to be quite cold. So if you take that thyroid gland, flip it back to front, have a look on the back, you can see that there's usually between four to eight parathyroid glands stuck on the back of it. Parathyroid gland releases parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone plays a role in calcium homeostasis. If we need more calcium in the blood, the parathyroid hormone is released. And what it does is it can tell the osteoclasts of our bones, these break bones down, the osteoclasts break bones down, release calcium into the bloodstream. Also tells our intestines to absorb more calcium as well. Also tells the kidneys to stop, stop excreting calcium in the urine. So this three-pronged attack allows for parathyroid hormone to boost calcium levels in the blood. We've got the heart. So you may be aware or may not be aware that the heart can produce a hormone called ANP, atrial natriuretic peptide. When you hear natrio, think sodium. Atrial natriuretic peptide, what it does is if blood pressure is too high, it can release this, tells us to pee out sodium. If we pee out sodium, what we're gonna do is pee out water and it drops the blood pressure back down. What we've got for the stomach, if we look at the stomach, the stomach's got a number of different hormones that can release, including ghrelin, gastrin, somatostatin, and a lot of them play an important role in hunger and eating and stimulating hydrochloric acid production by stimulating the parietal cells. If you look at uh, ghrelin and gastrin, they stimulate it, somatostatin inhibits it. If we have a look at the small intestines, it can release a hormone called CCK, cholecystokinin, Cholecystokinin means contraction of the gallbladder. So in actual fact, when fatty foods get into the small intestines, CCK is released by a certain type of cells called enteroendocrine cells, which travels to the gallbladder that sits underneath the liver. It squeezes and squeezes bile, which is detergent, into the small intestines, and it breaks down fats for us. The liver itself can, has a multi, multitude of hormones, one of which is angiotensinogen. If it ends in O-G-E-N, it's stored and inactive. So it needs to be activated into angiotensin. 
angiotensin plays a very important role in maintaining blood pressure and fluid balance within the body. The kidneys play an important role with hormone production because it produces EPO, which is erythropoietin. This stimulates red blood cell production. Some people who blood dope use EPO, more red blood cells, more oxygen carrying capacity, more oxygen being delivered to the muscles, more activity, more energy. Adrenal glands had the mineralocorticoids and the glucocorticoids. There's too many to discuss right now, but I have done a video on it, so please take a look. And we've got the pancreas, and the pancreas can release insulin and glucagon. Insulin is released when blood sugar levels are high, glucagon is released when blood sugar levels are low. So this is a quick run through of the endocrine glands, cells, and some of the hormones and functions that they have.